If you want to reach gold, platinum or diamond this season, you've come to the right place as today we're going to go over the quick and dirty way to climb solo queue with Annie. Now the reason that I recommend Annie is that she's a very simple champion that can be played top, mid and support and carry the game in all three roles while making all the plays that are needed to win the game. I'll be going over how to use her abilities properly, how to play solo top, solo mid and support, what runes, masteries and items you will want to use, and a few simple strategies to carry games to victory, and yes that's even as support so if you're that guy that's complaining about being support and unable to carry the game, this is the guide for you. We'll start off by going over the basics of Annie's kit. Annie has a relatively long range auto attack. Against all opponents in lane, you'll want to auto attack them whenever they're in range, but do remember to retreat once your auto attack animation is underway to avoid excess aggro from the enemy minions. Pyromania is your stun passive. You can use it offensively or defensively for trading damage, initiating a fight, or stunning your opponents to buy your team time to escape. Q is Disintegrate. Aside from making farming minions really easy, you'll be using this along with auto attacks to soften up your opponent so that you can finish them off later on. With your passive, it can be used to catch out specific targets in teamfights. W is Incinerate, a multi-target spell that you'll want to use for an instantaneous stun on people who are very difficult to hit with your Q. Also, if Tibbers is down or not available, this is the ability you want to use to initiate and stun as many people as possible in a teamfight. E is Molten Shield. This is a low mana cost ability that you'll be spamming often to cycle your stun. Typically what you want to do is get 3 stacks of Pyromania and activate Molten Shield as you use one of your abilities. This allows you to stun people without telegraphing your intentions. Your ultimate is Summoning Tibbers. This is the ability that you will be using to initiate teamfights. Since this is an AoE spell, you do not need to land it directly on your opponents to stun them. You just need to catch people within the edge of the area of effect. It does take some practice and you will miss the first few times trying to catch people within the edge of your ultimate. But once you've got it down, it's going to give you a massive advantage over the vast majority of players who do not respect the potential range of this ability. Now let's talk about Annie's laning capabilities. In the top lane, Annie is an oddball pick and will throw off a lot of people. 9 times out of 10, you will be laning against a melee opponent, which means you get to abuse them with auto attacks every single time they go into farm. Just remember to back up between auto attacks to avoid excessive minion aggro. Now since this is a lane matchup that most people are not familiar with, being extremely aggressive on Annie in the top lane can drive people into submission forcing them to play passively, which makes it easy to whittle them down to low HP and finish them off. Many top laners do have gap closers to help them get into range where they will out damage you, and in these cases you want to use your stun to disrupt their burst and disengage. And then you can go back to the old pattern of harassing them down with auto attacks and abilities. Annie can be surprisingly oppressive in the top lane. Enemy junglers would love to kill an Annie in the top lane so do remember to ward the river to prevent ganks. In the mid lane you will have 3 different types of matchups. Since Annie is a short range mage you'll often find yourself against champions who can farm minions and poke you out of a lane from a distance and there isn't a whole lot that you can do against them. This is where your mobility comes in handy and you want to be constantly moving around in lane dodging the spells being thrown at you. So if you're laning against a Xerath, a Lux or a Syndra, the mid lane basically becomes a game of dodgeball. Just try to farm up and wait for your jungler to gank at which point you can burst them down. There will also be some favorable matchups versus champions who are not able to zone you and cannot match your burst damage either. They could be melee or ranged but in either case what you want to do is dodge their abilities and attack them whenever they come up to farm, softening them up so you can finish them off later. Lastly, you'll find yourself in extremely oppressive lanes where you're getting poked down hard and farming under your turret. This usually happens versus opponents that know they can poke you down from a distance while still maintaining safe escapes from your jungler. 
In these kinds of matchups, you just want to farm up defensively getting whatever minions you can. Next in the bottom lane, we have Support Annie where you will again have three different types of matchups. As far as supports go, Annie is an all-in support who can poke with auto attacks from a distance. Unfortunately, she's not the best all-in support so you want to be careful of level 2 and 3 versus other all-in supports as the enemy support can set up a kill on you very easily. However, once you hit level 6 and have Tibbers, you become the strongest all-in support in the game and can focus down the enemy AD carry on your own almost every single time. The next matchup that you'll face are poke compositions that may or may not have sustain. In either case, you never want to allow multiple small trades to go through. If you're going to trade, burst off a large chunk of their HP hard so that in the next trade you can go all in and finish them off. Lastly, we have the super sustain lanes. These are lanes you want to avoid trading with at all costs as you will lose every single trade and they will just heal back up to full HP. The best way to deal with these lanes is to wait until you and your ally reach level 6, then attempt to all in the enemy lane using your full burst along with ignite. Now it's a question of summoners and itemization. In the top lane you'll be using teleport and flash for the most part. This is to match the teleport roaming potential of your lane opponent. In the mid lane we'll be using teleport and flash against lanes where we know we're going to get poked and zoned. On the other hand, if we have a solid advantage in lane, we'll be taking Ignite to help secure the kill on the enemy mid laner. In the bottom lane, we'll always be running Ignite Flash as we intend to kill the enemy AD carry or support. Now let's move on to the items. Top and mid, we start with the Doron's Ring, and in the bottom lane, we start with the Spell Thief's Edge. Always. Whenever you're playing Support Annie, your first completed item is always going to be a Sightstone. There will be no debate on this. Whether you're playing in the top lane, the mid lane, or the bottom lane, the absolute best item you can build on Annie is a Zonia's Hourglass. It's less important at lower ranks, but as you start climbing, you'll run into people who are good at closing the gap and getting onto you. Since Annie has no natural escapes, this item will save your life and it can be rushed as the first item in the top lane and the mid lane versus AD matchups. On the other hand, if you're getting destroyed by magic damage in the mid lane or the top lane, you will rush magic resist and turn it into an abyssal scepter. This will allow you to survive the laning phase and it still functions as a damage item later on. Zonia's hourglass and abyssal scepter combined form a decent chunk of defensive itemization for any. Next up we have Ludens Echo. This is the preferred first rush item in the mid lane because the additional movement speed helps you get around the map to gank other lanes and will generally help you close the gap towards anyone for the rest of the game. Next up we have Rabidon's Deathcap. This combined with Ludens Echo is probably the most amount of burst and mobility you can get in your first two completed offensive items. If you're snowballing ahead, it's best to rush these two items together. Next is Morello Nomicon. It's best to build this item on Support Annie so that you can cycle your abilities quicker and get out more stuns in teamfights. Next we have Rylan's Crystal Scepter. This item gives you a decent chunk of HP to help you survive burst damage, which makes it the best item to rush in the top lane versus melee opponents that you cannot burst down. Whether you're playing top mid or support, at some point you may want to rush a voice staff to cut through any magic resistance that the enemy team might be building. With regards to boots, it's pretty simple. If you built a Ludens Echo, you get Sork Shoes. If you did not, you get Mobility Boots. Now there may come a time when Zonia's Hourglass and Abyssal Scepter are not enough survivability. In the top lane, if you need to get tankier for your team, you can consider building a Randuin's Omen or a Banshee's Veil for substantially increased durability. You might have noticed that I have not recommended items like Locket, Zeke's Mikhail's, or Righteous Glory on Support Annie. And the reason we will not be building these items on Support Annie is that we do not leave things to chance. If your teammates fail to perform, you will need to have the power to carry the game and you will need to itemize to become a second AP carry. Here are a number of viable builds for top, mid, and support any. Pick and choose your items, mixing them up as needed for your particular matchup. An important point on Ryla's Crystal Scepter is that it has great synergy with your ultimate. The area of effect damage will allow you to continuously slow your opponents. 
This means with Rylas, you can use Tibbers to kite individual targets while you keep attacking them from a safe distance, or you can slow an entire team allowing you to initiate or peel in teamfights. Here are the runes and masteries that we will be using. The emphasis here is on mobility, auto attacks, and whatever sustain we can get in lane by simply farming minions. Now let's talk about the strategies that you'll be using to win your games. The first one is a level 4 roaming gank that works well in the top lane or the mid lane. You will start off by shoving your lane into the enemy turret, and then you're going to charge up your stun and look for a lane that has an overextended target. Once you decide on a lane, you simply roam to that lane and you're going to hit them with Disintegrate or Incinerate to stun them. And with the help of your allies, you take them down. In this first example, we're going to shove the wave at mid and then charge up our stun, and we notice there's a lot of action going on in the top lane. So we're going to roam up top and hit Mundo with Disintegrate stunning him, which allows Kale to pick up the kill. The top lane and the mid lane are generally the easiest targets for the level 4 roaming gank. Next, we have the level 6 gank that can be done by top, mid, and support Annie. Just like before, you shove your lane, charge up your stun, then go roaming to gank top, mid, or bottom, and you're going to initiate by stunning your opponents with Tibbers, and with the help of your allies, you're going to take them down. In this example, I saw that the enemy bottom lane was overextended, so after shoving my lane at mid, I started roaming towards bottom through the enemy jungle, came from behind hitting Ash with Tibbers, stunning her, and this led to a double kill for our team. The roaming gank with Tibbers is the easiest roaming gank in the game. Moving on to mid to late game strategies, another strategy is to spot low HP targets that are farming a minion wave. This is usually the result of someone on the enemy team winning a fight against one of your allies, then hanging around to farm minions at low HP. Charge up your stun and get over to them before they finish farming and kill them immediately. In this example, the enemy Yasuo wins a duel with our mid laner. He got taken down to low HP and he should be recalling but the greed for minions is too strong so he decides to hang around at low HP and farm the minion wave. Spotting this opportunity, we come through the river coming from behind and pick off the enemy Yasuo with Tibbers. And yes, this is support Annie. In this next example, we see the enemy Akali escaping from a gank at the mid lane and returning to her turret. Roaming down towards mid from the top lane, we catch her just as she's trying to recall and kill her. Our next strategy is playing around allied groups of minion waves. Know that wherever there are minions, a carry will come by to farm it. So when you see a cluster of your minions traveling down the map, Head down towards them and you can intercept or kill the enemy carry that comes to farm the minion wave. In this first example, we're hiding in the bushes near a cluster of allied minions. As we are charging up our stun, the enemy Jinx comes by to farm the minion wave, and just as she finishes farming, we come out of the bushes, stunning her with Tibbers for the kill. In this next example, we see that we have a large minion wave moving up top. Knowing that one of the enemy carries will be drawn towards it, we start heading up the river towards our minion wave, intercepting the enemy Tristana along the way, killing her. The next strategy is one that works during standoffs and skirmishes. We are looking for one misstep, one single mistake in positioning by a squishy champion on the enemy team, and we will punish them hard. While this can be done with basic abilities, when you need more power you will hit them with flash tibbers to delete them off the map instantly. This is the strongest strategy that is available for Annie and it can even turn around fights against teams that are empowered by the Baron buff and this is the reason that everyone hates Annie. In this first example, the enemy Nami gets too close to me while I'm retreating so I turn around and delete her before continuing on my way. In this next example, we're on the defensive against an enemy team that is pressuring us with Baron. The enemy Lux gets a little bit too close trying to land one of her snares, and I flash over it, stunning her with Tibbers, deleting her off the map instantly. Zonyas allows me to survive the following team fight, and the advantage that the enemy team had is gone, and we are back in this game. 
In this next example, my team is tilting hard and fighting with one another. The enemy team is shoving into our base with a Baron buff, but I have not given up yet. I notice the moment that the enemy LeBlanc steps out of place, and I hit her with Flash Tibbers. We wipe out the entire enemy team, and I survive the fight again by using Zonia's Hourglass. Despite being horribly behind against the team that had the Baron buff, this one Flash Tibbers is all that it took to ace the enemy team, and we would march on down to their base to take down the unguarded enemy Nexus. In this next example, the enemy team has started Baron, but their AD carry is late to join them. Seeing that Ash is momentarily isolated from her team, I pick her off as she attempts to rejoin them. And in case you're wondering, this is Support Annie. If any one of these strategies leads to a point where you have a numbers advantage on the map, do try to force an objective. It could be Dragon, it could be Baron, Turret's Inhibitor, or the Nexus. I do not care, just do something with your advantage besides recalling to buy more items. What you do while your opponents are dead is what's going to help you win the game. And so we've come to our Annie flowchart. Use any one of the strategies discussed earlier to pick off opponents in lane, in skirmishes, or in teamfights, and use the numbers advantage that you get to force objectives for your team. If the game is not over yet, repeat this cycle over and over until it is. When the game finally ends, odds are you won this game, so congratulations on your victory. If you end up losing despite all of these efforts, just blame it on lag and take a break and come back later. I'm not exactly the greatest Annie player in the world, but this guide is based off my experiences with her on an Annie-only account in ranked solo queue, and I can validate that everything that I've discussed here works up to diamond. Her kit is very easy to use, but also extremely effective, and I highly recommend her to anyone trying to get gold, platinum, or diamond this season. At the time of releasing this video, there are 7 days left until the end of this season. Good luck with the rest of your games. If you found this video helpful, do subscribe to the channel, follow on Twitter, and leave a comment about what kind of content you would like to see in future videos. Do check out the video links on either side for more gameplay tips and strategies in this channel.